Hey everyone, it's Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the Amazon FBA and e-commerce podcast. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Okay, today we got a great topic, the mindset behind writing a great Amazon listing. Our guest today has helped thousands of companies scale scale and profit up to $6 billion in sales. And that's B, that's a B, not an M, as a Amazon hypnotic copywriter. She, when she's not geeking out uh, with a new mindset or workflow or converting financing strategies, she enjoys inventing new recipes, hanging out with her family at her lake. We were just talking about that, going on road trips, any of these from her Washington state home. And of course I am talking about Diane Bolster. So she's going to be our guest. She's been on many times before. We're going to be talking about some great stuff. So before we get into it, let's talk, uh, or let's have a word from our sponsor. Thank you, Z.co, for sponsoring this episode of Lunch with Norm. Are you looking to take your e-commerce business from local to global? You can with the help of Z and their brand new app. That's right. You can track live shipments with push notifications, get detailed lead times for each stage of your shipment, and store all compliance and VAT reclaim documents in the palm of your hand, all while listening to Lunch with Norm. Ready to expand your e-com empire and take your Amazon FBA business global? Use the link in the description to learn more about Z's new app that's now available on desktop and mobile. That's Z.co, Z-E-E dot C-O. All right. Where is the Squire? So that's just sticking, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I think so. Squire. squire thing. Yeah. You know All right. Okay, well, uh, welcome Beard Nation. Welcome Simon and AMZ Elite. It's great to see you. I have to say Diane is one of my favorite guests that we have on. She is captivating and you can tell she's just passionate about um, copywriting and um, helping you with your Amazon listing. So please, if you have any questions, put them over in the comment sections and let us know. Also, if you have any suggestions for future topics, um, for the Lunch with Norm podcast or future guests, let us know in the comments section. We'd love to uh, hear it out. Uh, or you can email me, uh, k at lunchwithnorm.com. And it's great to see Sarah as well and Abdur and a Facebook user. Uh, welcome, everyone. Also, uh, we just released a new uh, blog on our website, too. So if you're interested, go check that out. That's on the Lunch with Norm website uh, with Katita. And uh, they uh, are doing a guest blog on our website with six ways to reduce Amazon FBA fees. So check it out. I'll put the link in the com in the comments as well. And uh, yeah, I think we can jump into today's episode. And... Okay. Well, d just before we do, I just want to um, announce uh, or check out uh, something that is uh, dear to my heart, and that is the uh, the Mexico trip that's coming up. So. Amy Weiss, Tim Jordan, and myself um, have put together an event that I think is um, I think it's perfect timing. Uh, everybody's scattering and not knowing what to do in China or asking a lot of uh, questions about that. We've been talking about, especially Alpha Lobby, talking about um, where to source, where to source in North America, uh, United States, Mexico. Uh, we've been looking into South America. I know on our Centurion League calls, we've talked about you know Guatemala or um, Colombia, just different places in South South Central uh, America as well as Mexico. So, anyways, we've got this all together. It's happening in April. We've got a, an actual sourcing trip set up at the World Trade Center in Mexico, and then uh, whoever wants to can fly over to Cancun to Moon Palace with us, and we're putting on a, a incredible mastermind with all sorts of top um, speakers there. So I think unless you've added the pricing right now, um, there's a waiting list. Uh, we're going to announce all the pricing. It just depends on a variety of different things right now, um, the sponsors and a variety of things. But check it out. Go on the list. You'll be the first to be notified once that's published. And I think we're looking at Friday to publishing everything in the speaker speakers and everything kills. Yeah, I think so. So uh, I'll post that in the comment sections. Um, so you guys can, if you're interested, check it out. And uh, I'll 
I'll be in Mexico too. So I'll be hanging out with everyone. So if you're, if you're part of it, I'll probably get to meet you. So I uh, love meeting our uh, beard nation. So yeah, check it out. I know Roz is going to be there. Yep. That's so right. Jessica rabbit. Yep. All right. So if you do have any comments today, uh, again, uh, we love having Diane on here. She's awesome. Uh, so if you have any uh, topic or questions about copywriting, anything like that, just throw it in the comments section. And now, Kelsey, you can get the heck out of here. So sit back, relax, grab that cup of coffee and enjoy the episode. Hello, Ms. Diane. Hello, Mr. Norm. How are you? I, I saw all those kids screaming in the background. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear them? There are six right now. One is already gone for the day. Yay! Um. <laughs> They're having fun out there. I think they're doing uh, the, the two youngest ones already got through their math this morning because they're just they love to learn. And the middle schoolers are like deciding whether or not they're going to have a good attitude today. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, that's kind of how it's going on the other side of that door right now. <laughs> Did you I see? I, uh, I I didn't even know he was doing this, but Kelsey started his own. It, it's lunch with Norm, but it's Kelsey's TikTok channel. Have you seen no, it? I know. I haven't seen that. No, oh, it's hilarious. Oh yeah, you got to check it out. It has nothing to do. I'm not on there. It's just him doing TikTok, I guess. But <laughs> I don't do a good job on TikTok. So I guess he said, oh, I'll just do it. It's the son of the beard guy. So it's pretty funny. Oh, wow. I'm gonna have to yeah. Right so again. what's new with you since we've last talked? I think I got married. Does that count? <laughs> yes, that counts. That's a, that's a big event. I got married in November. Yeah. <laughs> Congrats. Yeah, that was really exciting. Thank you. We got married on Thanksgiving and then took all the kids on a honeymoon to Great Wolf Lodge, which is like this indoor water park. I love Great Wolf Lodge. It's amazing. It's so cool because you can just kind of, they have these little wristband thingies. And if you have kids that are old enough, you just kind of drop them off and they just scatter. And then you yeah. see them again later at dinner time and they're super exhausted and they have so much fun. Yeah. Um, it is really like for big families. We have, we have not, we have seven kids total. Uh, both of us that live here most of the time and it's an amazing deal and it's so much fun like I think we pay $1,500 for two or three nights but it's everybody like it gets you like a master suite for adults and like it includes water park passes which are like a hundred bucks a kid normally anyway and it's just super fun activities for them all the time and it's like all ages so anyhow I'm not I'm not an affiliate of theirs I'm not here to promote them but yeah we had a blast doing that and I mean it's just been a whirlwind like we went straight from there into we have five birthdays between October and January. And so like we had the birthdays, we had the holidays, we had, we took the kids to Leavenworth, which is like the Bavarian village. And so we've just been running like crazy. I started, I launched my latest training in November, right at the same time as having a wedding, which I don't know why I thought that was a brilliant idea, but oh. I, you know, it's like, you don't even feel, it's kind of like when you, after you've had three kids and you have a fourth one, you don't even notice that it's more, you know, it's crazy. That's what I say. <laughs> Same thing with, now you've got seven kids training program, you know? Um, so, I mean, it's just, it's been amazing. The training program's going really well. Um, yeah. Started doing a joint venture with a company to solve a lot of the shipping challenges that people are having right now. So working on that, like, it's just been, you know, of course, you know, every time you go back into training, you have to re you have to go back and revisit everything else that you've already learned um, like when you go and you, you create a training and like I created a whole new, it was the first new training I've created since 2017. Um, so it's completely updated, uh, in 2021, 2022. And it's like, you know, all the things you, you realize how, how much you had to learn to get to where you are and oh. it makes you a lot more confident. And then when you're going to train people, they ask questions, you don't even, you know, like you've never even thought of like, oh, that comes naturally to me. And, and one of those things that came up was, was, uh, the mindset, like all these mindset practices I have that actually write these listings that make people so much money versus like, you know, listings that just kind of sit there on Amazon or sit there on, you know, obviously like we do websites and sales funnels and all that. Right. Um, so it's, it, that's something that I was talking to Kelsey about. I'm like, you know, we've, we've covered so many things that I'd love to cover whatever you guys want, but I think that the mindset, the foundation of what you do is so important to sales in general and then writing. Yeah. So I think that's so important. It's a great subject. Um, before we get into it, um, because there's, there's a ton to talk about, but, uh, right, we have good. a giveaway today. You want to talk about that? I do. All right. Yeah, so I'm doing, I'm giving away two cause I don't like to ever just give away one. Cause you know, there's always like, I don't know, 
I like to give away two. So we're giving away two of the Hypnotic Amazon Listing Plus packages. And that is um, keyword infused, you know, high click through rate title. You've got your, it's either five or 10, depending on who you are, bullet points, right? Yep. Um, of course, Hypnotic bullet points. You've got your uh, description, if you need a description, uh, HTML, or you can do uh, EBC content, A plus content with your image guidance. So I tell you, which type of images to use and who to put on them and what kind of seals to use and what kind of hypnotic anchors um, and semiotic anchors to use and things like that. You know, sometimes we go into colors if you haven't established your brand yet. So basically how exactly which, like how to put together your, your EBC so that it actually sells more as opposed to like, oh, look, there's pretty pictures that don't really do much, right? So it includes all of that. Plus, of course, keywords. And we have a new keyword team, which is they they blow my mind. Like we, the other keyword team moved on um, a few months ago because they just like, they have their degrees and they're, you know, they weren't really into it anymore. And I yeah. ran into these guys who were getting these insane results um, on PPC. So we now have like a PPC division as well. Right. So I ran into these guys, they have these insane results. And I was like, how in the world are you doing this? So we jumped on the phone, um, you know, because I, I wasn't originally writing their copy and now I, I handle all that on that side. So we jumped on the on a couple of calls and I was like, show me your results. Like, this can't be real, right? Like, how are you getting your ACOS down to this and, you know, your sales up to this and like such a short amount of time. And they're like, oh, it's it's like this. And look at like, and they showed me this report and I was in love. And I was like, oh my God, this is the most thing I've ever seen in my entire life for keywords. It's like, here are the nine steps you take and here are like all these different columns and this is how you're going to set it up. And like, I mean, it was just absolutely phenomenal. It went way beyond anything else I'd ever seen. So I hired them. So <laughs> so it includes keywords too. And I, I like, I want to show you guys, some of these keyword reports are like, they're insane. So that's okay. like the kind of the, the icing on the cake. So that way you have everything you need to launch. Not because a lot of times if you get a listing, they like, oh, I have to figure out keywords and I have to go, you know, figure like it's going to take me, you know, six months to fine tune my advertising. But with these guys, we don't have to. So I'm really excited about that too, obviously. what What's because the value of that? Uh, the current value of that package is, I think right now it's on sale for $9.97. So I had to, awesome. I'd have to go double check what I'm doing right now. <laughs> it's, been, <laughs> it's been like a big focus on training this week. Um, we had yeah. our youngest just got out of surgery on Monday, so emergency surgery. So it's, my brain's a little scattered, but. Oh, he's good. Nothing, now. no pressure, no stress. <laughs> no stress. That's just life. You just, you keep sailing, you know, smile and sail. It's, that's exactly. <clears throat> so if you are interested, um, I believe you said that there was two, right? Yeah. I like wow. to give away two. Okay. So there's two packages of, of what you just heard. I think it's incredible. Both worth a thousand dollars each. If you like to get in on this, we're going to, uh, all you have to do is hashtag wheel of Kelsey. If you want to enter twice, tag two people. Now we can get into all of this good stuff. <clears throat> so we're going to be talking about mindset and uh, yes. why don't we just dive right into it? So what, what type of mindset should a Amazon seller have for a successful listing? There's a couple things that I, that I've been um, working in my training with on with people, right? So the biggest one, and some of this might sound woo woo and some people might not, you know, subscribe to this. And I totally understand, but I am like, but like, this is how I gained. This is how I got my success. It's how I achieved uh -huh. my success. And this is how I've helped other sellers achieve their success. Right. The biggest thing is gratitude ahead. Okay. So before you ever go into your research or put your, your pen to paper or your, you know, keyboard to, you know, your sheet online, whatever, write out your results that you want as though you've already achieved them. Like, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Now that I have, you know, now that I'm seeing X number of sales, right? And it, you know, um, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Now that like my ACOS is, you know, or they cost some tacos, you know, like there's all these different terms out there right now. Yeah. That my ad spend is, you know, only this percentage. Thank you, thank you. And, you know, Amazon likes their own terms, but let's just add spend, right? Because we do the sales funnels and that's not a tacos or an ACOS, right? Um, you know, th like giving gratitude ahead and focusing on that. Not only like from a spiritual perspective, I believe that that's much better. And from a health perspective, it's much better to focus on gratitude, but it actually gets your brain into gear. Like it starts, it starts shifting reticular activating system to look at, okay, I already know what I need to do and what I need to say and what to look for to make sales, right? Okay. As human beings, we've read enough listings. We've looked at enough advertising. A lot of times we just don't think that we have what it takes 
And truthfully, everybody does. But most people's brains are not in that in that lane on the freeway, right? They're completely like, they're like, oh, I have to worry about this. And I've got the shipping and I've got the logistics and I've got the, you know, my 3PL or I've got, you know, Amazon's down my, breathing down my neck about this, or I've got this and this and this and this and this, right? When you're sitting down and focusing on your listing, if you're focusing on reading the gratitude ahead as though you've already achieved this, your brain will start to naturally look for ways to make that possible, right? So write out the result you want as though you already have it and write it out as though you're already giving thanks for it. And I do this for every single client that I work with right? And as I'm writing their listing, before I'm writing their listing, while I'm doing research, I circle back to that constantly and say, okay, this is brain, this is what we're doing for this person. We want to get these results, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for these results, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, and like just getting my brain into that gratitude mode. And I know it sounds really silly, but I actually, I have a whole nother business and blog that has like 10,000 followers that's based on shifting your reality using things like gratitude and EFT, right? So like, I know this stuff works, but I've been really worried about talking about it because in the world of business, most people don't like to talk about, you know, a success mindset, but the way that you tell your brain that is by thanking it ahead of time or thanking whoever you, you know, whichever, whatever you'd like ahead of time, right? So gratitude ahead is really important. Writing out the result you want and giving gratitude is really important. And then saying like, keeping your focus on sales, right? So your first job is to write down in the very bare basic minimum, like boring black and white language, like the things that you need to say to sell before you ever power it up, right? Because powering it up is what makes people think, wow, that's a really cool listing. I want to buy it. But you have to make sure you have those basics in there first, right? So keeping a focus all the time on sales, like I'm doing this because not because I want people to think I'm cool, not because I want my friends to read this and say, hey, this is an amazing listing. I love this. You're so creative. Oh, that's so funny. That's so witty. Keeping your focus on sales, right? Um, and then my other step is like, I always try to visualize the per the people who like, oh, literally when I'm writing a listing, like before I start, I visualize people coming and like literally searching for what that thing would be on Amazon seeing it on the top, like seeing it, you know, in the first column right below, obviously not sponsored. We want it to be, you know, first, you know, like row, second row, something like that. Getting excited about it, you know, and seeing kind of what they see, right? In terms of competition, I'll go look at what the competition is. Obviously we have to research it anyway, but kind of visualizing that listing there and saying, oh, okay, like I'm going to visualize this person going through the process. Like, okay, they're seeing this. What do they want to see? Their title, you know, like the, what are they? What are they looking for in the title? What are they looking for when they go to the page? What's going to make them read the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, right? And then I literally visualize people, and I'll do this for at least twenty customers, and say, like, not my clients, but for twenty of my clients' customers, like over and over and over again in my brain, like, okay, you know, what is it that um, is going to get them to click that that add to cart button? And I'll visualize people clicking the add to cart button, seeing the other thing on Amazon now that had like the on mine it changes sometimes, but there's like a summary of like other products you should consider, right? Yeah. And things in your cart and all these distractions, like, oh, I don't like visualizing, like, I don't care about all that stuff. It's too important. I want this now. Right. And for some of them, like for, for some of the Amazon products, you can just visualize like that, you know, they'll just like buy it now, button, right? Like click, go, they have credit cards in there. We're just going to click, go, click, go, click, go. Right. So that's really, really important. And then just continuing that cycle, gratitude ahead, right. Being thankful, reading what you've written out, um, you know, focusing on sales, like being grateful and excited about the sales that are coming in already. And then even though, even if it's your brand new listing, brand new product, your first time on Amazon, this mindset is really, really important. And then going through and visualizing customers feeling really, really happy about buying it, right? Yeah, like, I've seen I'm, that, Diane. So, oh, you know, yeah. you, 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 if you go through, let's say you're you're, you're buying, a, I, I don't know, an iPhone case, but there's a million out, out there and you, then you start looking at the top performers and okay this is interesting oh yeah they've got really great um uh, great images oh, they've got a pretty good title mm -hmm. and they've got four stars but all of a sudden there's that one listing that you just go oh, no no and you keep going back to that list. this is the listing yep. i've got to buy from yeah and i have to do like this you is don't it. know what it is i mean and i think you're nailing it by talking about this portion of mindset and if anybody, I don't know what you said, woo-hoo or woo-joo or something woo -woo. like that. If you think this is <laughs> I'm just woo-woo. I'm very woo-woo, woo spiritual person. Like, I, I believe in manifesting. Yeah. Well, Sorry. <laughs> so anybody who's, you know, that could be questioning it, uh, and that that's fine. But we're talking to a lady that's written 
six billion dollars worth of sales he's like with her client base so yeah. i think that that's got to be taken into consideration and you know a little bit about what you're talking about so oh, this is it? just a little <laughs> right <laughs> but, well, you know people, seriously though the my the my most successful clients my seven and eight figure sellers who go from nothing to that like yeah you know it takes 10 years to become an overnight success but they'll suddenly shift I'll ask them like, Hey, what happened? This is amazing. Suddenly you're sourcing 10 products a month. And you know, I know cause I'm writing 10 listings a month for them, you know, versus like we were doing one every three months and they're like, Oh, I did this thing. And I got this couch and I reprogrammed my mindset. And I'm like over and over and over again, I'm hearing this and they're still hiring the same copywriter. They're using the same advertising methods. They're on the same platform. They're selling the same type of product. They have the same brand, but all of a the sudden their sales are through the roof. So if people are looking for that missing piece and they already have all the other great players in place, this is totally worth trying, you know, yeah. and you can do it. I do this in every area of my life. Like I give gratitude ahead for everything. Um, it's not just, you know, sales for clients. It's like, you know, if I want something else really cool to shift in my world, you know, like I suddenly decided this last summer that I didn't want to, you know, be dating forever. And I was going to meet the love of my life. And suddenly, like, I think that was... August 23rd. No, that was July 23rd. And on July 27th, I was on this dating site randomly. And I met this guy. And I was like, you're really cool. But you live seven hours from me. And this is not going to work. And he was like, I'll drive over every weekend and spend every weekend with you and date you. And for as long as it takes. And he did. And we well, that's because you were using hypnotic anchors. I, I wasn't. In your... I, purposely <laughs> him. I was like, I want you to love me for me, not because I can talk you into it. You know what I mean? Uh... It was really standoffish, you know, and I was like, I have five kids. And he was like, I'm one of six. And, you know, like I wanted a big family. And I was like, okay, I think you're and so, like, so, of course, I thought the guy was nuts. He's in, he's on the other side of the door. I'm sure you can hear me talking about this. <sighs> Love him to pieces, but I thought he was nuts. But any area, money, I do this ahead for like when I want business, I do give gratitude ahead for business growth. Yeah. I give gratitude ahead. I mean, it's just, it's something that I've learned really works well for me, you know? So anyhow, and the yeah. other reason for this, just one more thing. The other reason for doing yeah. this is a lot of people think that sales is a dirty word, right? We've been programmed to believe that selling is, some people have been programmed to believe that selling is a bad thing. We shouldn't sell people, right? We shouldn't, we shouldn't like that's, that feels yucky, right? But when you start shifting into this, like sales feels good and I'm really helping people and I can see that people are excited that I put in all this effort to write this and to source this product and to get it here because this is really helping people. And even if it's just like a wine rack, you know, like this, this makes them feel better about having guests over, you know, this makes them feel more sophisticated, confident. You know, if it's a supplement, I write so many supplements. It's like, I swear to God, I live 80% in the, the health, that the high compliance health field, right? Like this helps people. And if you can start training your brain to see like selling is not a bad thing. These people mm -hmm. really need this. Then you will naturally start feeling more comfortable with selling and more of what you need to flow out onto that paper will flow out on that paper and you won't be second guessing everything you write, you know? I had, um, it was on Monday, we had Greg Reed on and he was he, just an incredible individual. Anyways, um, very entrepreneurial, just what a guy. It was, it was a fan, or at least my opinion, I might be biased, but uh, it was, yeah. it was a great podcast. One of the people that um, we both know is a guy named Mark Anthony Bates. And he's another just great coaching guy. And you know, Mark, Mark Anthony. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So Mark Anthony's got Mark this. Me, I know who Mark Anthony is. Yeah. Oh, so uh, oh. he's got this uh, coaching method called CPC. You mm -hmm. nailed it. You were talking about, well, I've got this, you know, listing. It's not working. You know, every listing I put up, I'm using the same writers. <clears throat> this is what Mark Anthony Bates calls CPC. And that is clue. Your clue constantly is that you're not getting anywhere. Pattern yep. is that you're not getting anywhere. And choice <laughs> is to use the same bad copywriter to get you the same pattern. So um, it, when, when you see that something's going that way, it's time that you have to change it up. So yep. if you see that there's success over here, it might cost you a bit more, but the clue is successful listings or what your competitors are doing that's successful, you mm -hmm. know, to, to, knock that off or do better. So that CPC method, or it's just a fantastic thought. Every time I was talking to Shane Oglo today and it's CPC, build that into our business model. And yep. what you're talking about with mindset and everything that we just touched on CPC, you yep. know, it, it, 
it just comes full circle again. Anyways, I don't want to take it up because you're the one that. It, no, now, I, was, I, was it, actually, I love that. I have something else to say about that because yeah. people, basically, like, okay, so they're not getting anywhere. Thing a lot of people they think that they have this. They have they're they're problem oriented versus solution oriented, and CPC is actually what we use to 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 like shift our brains from like this is this problem to being solution oriented, right? And what I mean by that is that when we go like when we see a problem, we think like there's these 4 million facets of like, if we pull this lever, this thing's going to collapse. If we do this, this is going to collapse. Right. So if you get your brain into the, into two modes, first of all, like the CPC, like what, like, can we be solution oriented? What's the solution to this? You already know what the solution is, right? Um, you know, change out products, hire a better copywriter, shift your mindset. Stop thinking about how things are going bad all day and start thinking about all the things that are going great. And you'll start training your brain to actually move your body in that direction. Right. And then we have the other side, which is like, you know, you can plan for what you don't want to happen, right? So if you're stuck in this like analysis paralysis and you think you have this big problem, just write down what you don't want to happen and work from there, right? Even because a lot of people say, well, I'm just too negative or I'm just too much of a worry word. Great. Let's leverage that. If you are a negative worry work kind of person, you are really great at finding like what you don't want to happen and focusing on that. And the way you train your brain to start looking at the positive is like write down what you don't want and then say, okay, we're going to plan based on this. How do we make sure this never happens? Right. And then go into the gratitude side of things if you need to, you know, I mean, you still need to like when you're ready to do that. Cause a lot of people, like some of us grew up, it took me a long time to get to this point. Some of us grew up with very worry wart parents, right. Who like, they worry about everything. Like if you don't get an A in this math class, you're never going to go to college and you're never going to have enough money, you're going to be home forever and you're never going to have babies. And like, like some of us had those parents, right? We're like, it's like one little thing in life and it like collapses everything else. But if you use those two different methods, like the CPC, you know, gratitude, you use um, the, you know, just plan what you don't want to happen, right? Plan away from that. Then you can start seeing a lot better results without feeling like you have to overthink things all the time. Right. If that makes sense. Yes. Total sense. All right. Okay. Here, here's I. I want to just add. This is going to be a good answer, I think. What's more important? So, keywords or copy? Like, I want to know the anatomy of a listing and what counts. Uh, your sales copy conversions count because you can't. I mean, I, I feel like I'm. I'm trying not to say this. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So, it's always going to be your sales. Sales are always going to be what matters most. Hi, Tegan. I, we have a student who has escaped from the table. Sales are always going to be what matters most. And you know what's really great is you can infuse keywords. Do you want to say hi? You can say hi. Hold on. Come over here and say hi. hi. This this is my six-year-old. See, they Tegan. Do That's Tegan. Can you say hi? Hi. You're talking to a whole hi. bunch of people. <laughs> right. Can you go see if Mark... I, don't, I thought I saw them in your bedroom on your bed. Like... I think so. I'm, but I'm, I'm going to do this and then I'll be able to help you in a few minutes. Okay. Okay. I love you. He's like, what are you doing? You're behind the door. I want it. You know, like when you're until you get on the phone, they don't know you exist. And they're like, mom, mom, mom. Um, okay. So you can like, first of all, like your most powerful keywords are always going to go, you know, in your title, right? That's really important. Um, yeah. We've, when we've measured this, we've noticed that keywords in the bullet points have almost no power. I mean, it's almost pointless to put them there at this point in time. So maybe one to two per bullet point, um, maybe. But honestly, your conversions are what drive your ranking on Amazon, period, end of story. Your conversions mm -hmm. per keyword are what drive your ranking, right? So you can't, and a lot of times that has to do with advertising, right? So that's why there are people who are ranked for a thousand keywords and not just the 10 in their bullet points. And that's why they're listing some people, like we have some seven and eight figure sellers who don't want us to use keywords. We don't use them in the bullets at all. The whole thing is about conversions, right? They don't want them there because they know that if someone has to stumble over that word, right? Um, even if it's a really cool word organically, like if someone has to stumble over it, then it's going to look good job. He found them. He found his head. Um, <laughs> it's going to work conversions, right? So Amazon, Amazon is a business. Okay. And everybody thinks it's a search engine. It's not, it's a business. They make money. That's what they want to do. So the more money you make them, um, the people who make the most money are the people who get the highest placement you know, just at like period, end of story. And it's really great. Like if you, you know, like you talk about the canonical, the canonicals, la, la, that big word, 
Um, you know, if you have like your main keyword before, you know, like in the first five words before your dash and your title, that's super helpful. We've measured that, right? And that a lot of times is what'll show up in your URL as your main keyword, right? Or is that your product, which is awesome, right? Cute little hint there. Um, or secret, or maybe it's not so secret anymore. It was secret a little while ago. Uh, you know, so I mean, those things are are important, but really if you're looking at, you know, your sales, people aren't getting sales based on keywords if you're competing with 18,000 other people, right? You're getting sales based on sales, you're getting ranking based on sales. So it's most important to focus on sales, not keywords. But I personally still have fun putting keywords in like it's it's always been a puzzle for me. So if I can sneak them in there and make it feel natural, then I'll do it. But not at this not at the expense of getting lower sales or conversions, you know, so sales. All right. Yeah. Can't keep the lights on. Okay, so before we get any further, please, if you want to uh, get some incredible writing done, copywriting done with uh, Diane and her team, uh, she's got two great prizes today worth over $1,000 each. Hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, tag two people, and you'll get a second entry. Also, questions, 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 or comments, throw them into the comments section. We'll be getting to them shortly. Uh, and Kelsey, put your finger on the button. It's time for a commercial. Thank you, Sellerize, for sponsoring this episode of Lunch with Norm. Sellerize is your comprehensive solution for your everyday business needs. Everything you need to grow and scale your Amazon business is just one click away. For more information, contact Dima and his team over at Sellerize.com. And remember, Sellerize is with one R. Okay, so you have... Um, pretty much answered this, but I just want to see if, if we can stretch this out because I've had people come up to me and ask me, well, why should we concentrate on even writing anything in our bullets? Like, because it, people don't read, it's a waste of time. I know what I say, but I'm interested to hear what you would say. A couple of things. It's a competition to well-educated people who are successful enough to have the money to continually buy your product. Absolutely read. In fact, most of them read 30 minutes a day, like just because they should. And they tend to be much more self-conscious about how they spend their money and mm -hmm. they tend to vote with their dollars, right? So these are all important things. The reason these are important is because if you don't use the correct language in your bullet points it, or on your images, I've been really hard on images, like use them on your images, right? Um, or in your EBC, you're going to lose those customers who are looking for something specific, right? So if you, let's say like, Let's take something really, really basic, right? Let's say you're selling a white t-shirt, okay? If you are at a table with 10 other people selling the same white t-shirt or a similar white t-shirt or some kind of white piece of clothing, article of clothing, right? Um, how are people going to know to choose you and what you do and what you offer over the other people there who are competing? And they're all writing bullet points and they're all using powerful punchy copy on their images right and i'll get to images in a minute because that's where that's like your images and ebc is where your copy is the most important your bullet points um is important for when people are on their you know pcs but not necessarily as much on their mobile devices right um but they, like you need to use that info that space to fill in information fill in the gaps for people you're also persuade like if you think of like the other three sellers in the top are not trying to persuade people using sales copy, then I would challenge you to go and take a look at what they're doing and what they're saying. And if they're using bullet points, right? If they're using bullet points and you are not, you are not competing at the best level you possibly can. If they're using words on their images and you're not, you can't compete. You know what I mean? Unless you have a one of a kind product that everybody in the world wants, you have a massive patent on it, or you only, only license to it, you're competing. And so you need as many words as possible to try to compete. And people, do, I mean, I think it's really funny. When everybody says people don't read, right? That's actually a misnomer. There is a, a part of the population that doesn't read, okay? Mm -hmm. It's the same part of the population in general that doesn't have enough money to purchase additional things that are non-commodities on Amazon, right? Who you're writing to on Amazon, you're writing to the middle and middle upper class. You are not writing to the people who cannot afford to purchase your product, right? So think about how much you want to charge for your product. And if you want to attract people who can afford to pay that, you need to be able to write to that audience. Does that make sense? That makes sense. It's a very basic. And I have like a whole video on why we, why bullet points are important. But yeah, um, I mean, really like it's a competition. Anybody who thinks it's not a competition is going to lose. 
you know? Uh, and so if you, and I don't mean to be negative, but seriously, like I have people all the time who are like, well, you know, I just, I want, um, you know, I like, I, I just want you to help me with my images because we have a graphic division. Right. And I'm like, great. I can help with your images. And the, I'm like, okay, so, you know, I need you to complete this questionnaire. This we call it a brief in advertising. Right. I need you to complete this brief. And they're like, oh, well, we don't really need all that. We just need, you know, help with our images and we do amazing images. And I'm like, okay, but we need you to complete this. So we know one who we're targeting two, what type of images we want to use and three, the kind of sales copy that goes on top. And they're like, we don't really need sales copy. And I'm like, okay, so what you're telling me here is that you think people are going to purchase a product based off of the images because once upon a time someone said an image is worth a thousand words but that same person never bothered to say the words you tell people to think about the image matter more than in your sales than like just randomly allowing them to think whatever they feel like thinking right so it's it's just it's like a whole, i have a whole thing with it <laughs> it's right. the whole thing you need the words to sell you need the words to frame you need the words to shift people's beliefs sometimes you know so and people are looking for reasons not to buy so, you know, if they don't see everything they need to see on that listing, that's a reason not to buy. Exactly. And one of the things I, I think uh, you've mentioned before, well, I know you've mentioned before, is that this is images with some copy that reflect the bullet, solidify mm -hmm. and validate. Um, if, you're, if you've got a book on your listing, that's not what the, or sorry, if you've got a book on your images, that's not what the image is for. But if you if you're taking that key uh, the uh, the bullet point and just hey if your benefit is here show it here if you've got a feature image then here's your features and you don't but you don't need to write a book but you validate just by showing hey it does this it does this it does this it has this it has this it has this or it could mm -hmm. be ingredients or anything like that but um, yeah I like I, I like the approach and actually you really drilled it home. I don't know if it was the last interview we did or the one before that, but when we were talking about images, it was a very good podcast. Uh, okay, so another thing, let's talk about, there's a lot of people, I don't believe in selling Me Too products. Um, I think you have to be innovative, right? And, mm -hmm. and be have something different, but there's still a lot of people who are, this is their first kick at the can. They've taken a mm -hmm. course, they want to get out there and learn, so they get a Me Too product. They do. Is there a way or what advice can you give them to differentiate between seven different plastic shoe stretchers all coming from the same factory? Yeah. So that's my favorite. That's one of my favorite things to do. Um, so that kind of goes back to that. You know, if you have seven shoe stretchers on a table and they're all the exact same and they're all going to be around the same price than 25% of each other, you know, and your consumer is more conscientious about getting something they want and need versus their price, which, you know, if you're staying within that 25% rule, they are usually looking for the best thing within a certain range, not like the lowest price, right? The first thing is um, positioning, obviously, you know, why is this particular product superior? And here's the thing, like, you don't have to have a product that's superior as long as it's a quality product. You just have to be able to use the words to like differentiate and position your product as superior, Right. So we get a lot of Me Too products, especially from newer sellers, right? Um, or from sellers who sell like 10 different types of things, right? They're like, oh, this is selling well. I'm going to sell it for two years. It's going to be amazing. Um, they can predict market trends. They know it's going to die in two or three years. They're going to have to hold, you know, liquidate the little amount they have left. So what we what we do is we have to look up really, really close, right? So like what are the things that are awesome about this product that your competitors aren't mentioning? right? What are the, like, take, like, scroll in, like, not scroll, zoom into the images and see, like, I'll notice, like, this is more curved. And so that means it won't snag the inside of your shoe. It could be the exact same product, but if nobody else mentions it and you use a hypnotic anchor or something along those lines to position your product as superior using that particular feature and the benefit it provides, your product is now superior. It's no longer a Me Too product, right? If, you know, like, so hypnotic anchors, you know, obviously, so people remember your product and know, like it anchors in a superior. Um, positioning is really important, right? Um, looking for anything that is in quite like any of your competitors' questions that they that they've answered uh, that has not been mentioned is really important. Looking through the reviews is really important. Um, talking to and you, I mean, you can always go back and like actually differentiate. A lot of people think like, you know, what can I package this with? But if you, and that's okay. Like, what can I you know pair this with, right? 
Um, and that's okay too. But really like if you're someone like me and you can take the same exact green tie wire or the, the you know, the plant tie wire or the same exact weed whacker string as everybody else is selling and take that and make it sell, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a month more than, than, you know, everybody else's product. It's not about the product that you got. It's about how you're selling it. Right. And we've, I mean, if you look on Amazon, you see Me Too products all the time and people just package them differently. Mm -hmm. uh, changing the color is also a Me Too product. Taking something that's already from the same factory and selling it with something else, still a Me Too product, right? You just have, you have to be able to justify the value of why you're charging more money. Um, and a lot of times those things kind of bomb out until you stop and think like, how do, it's not necessarily what makes this product superior because you would have to change something. It's how can I make it sound and appear superior? right? Things like incredible images, like uh, multi-layer stacked images, um, images that are more technical that have, you know, that are like pointing out the features and the benefits as opposed to like, here's an angle of the shoehorn. Here's another angle of the shoehorn. Here's another angle of the shoehorn. Do not use multiple angles of your shoehorn. I will cry. You will find me crying. We will both cry. <laughs> we will both cry. Um, on that note, no, three for some, okay. So we, we've run some tests Videos. And we know that um, 360 videos, right? People want to see it from all angles, but they want to yeah. see it move from, from, from all angles, right? Not everybody can afford to go get a 3D renderer for $10,000, dollars $20,000 to, to create that 360, right? So what you can do is you can have somebody like video it, like literally turning 360. There are little things you can get that you, you stick on top of it and it'll turn a 360. Yeah. Start it off like that. It's actually a hook that pulls people in and then roll into a lifestyle video, which we know... Um, definitely increases conversions and stick it in the seventh position of your carousel, right? Your image carousel. And then yep. like that, that shoots conversions through the roof. And you, of course you use sales copy to frame it. You're not just showing like, you know, unless it's like a diamond ring or something. If it's a fashion thing and you, you can literally just, I, I almost never touch fashion products anymore. Right. Cause it's all about like, Oh, that's my identity. I want to look like that. Right. Like they're seeing an image. They're seeing it from 360. They know what they want to look like. They already know what they want to buy. You're not really competing a lot on features unless it's like super soft or, you know, it lasts forever and they want it to last forever or it's made by the same company that makes Nike or, you know, something like that. Those are good positioning, but otherwise you're selling a fashion product, right? So the 360 right. is important, but with other products, make sure you're listing features and benefits in your videos, show them being used in real life and lifestyle videos. You know, there are people who, and maybe make that your second step after you're already getting sales because that's it's pretty expensive and it's a boost. It's not like the end all be all. You can't just create a video and then sell your product with just the video, right? In the main image. We've, we've actually tested this. Um, and you know, like you'll still get sales, but it doesn't have nearly as much of a boost as if you have successful copy and excellent images that have the successful copy on it. And then you add the video in addition, right? It's like the ice, extra layer of icing on the cake. It's not the end all be all of selling your product. So I don't mean to oversell it, but it's, it's a great way to get higher conversions. Perfect. So last question before we get into the listeners' questions. Mm -hmm. When you go back to mindset, what are the mistakes that you're seeing people have or do with their product listing? Oh, there's a couple um, when it comes to mindset. One is, you know, giving up hope too fast, right? So it takes... Sometimes it takes a little while on Amazon to gain momentum, especially if you're starting with a small ad budget and competing with people who have a large ad budget, right? I mean, that's just, it's it's kind of a common sense thing. And I hate the word common sense, but it is kind of a common sense thing. If somebody else is able to spend $500 a day to market and you're only able to spend 50, you know, don't expect yourself to have the same number of sales that they have right off the bat. Like give yourself some grace, right? Realize that it's not going to be, you're not going to be perfect coming right out of the gate, don't quit, like take a break. Like don't, if, if you're stressing out about your sales, like take a two day break, stop obsessively, it's like obsessively refreshing. I've seen people do this, like refresh, 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 refresh. I'm like, Amazon's only updating that every 24 hours or so, honey, like chill, you know, like just keep a positive attitude about it for as long as you possibly can and look for what the actual real problems are. Right. So there's all these crazy success stories out there. And we see them all over Facebook and Instagram. And it's like, I launched a product and made $80,000 oh million trillion dollars in two minutes. And it's like, okay, great. But you have 16 years of marketing experience that these other sellers don't have. And you have a sales funnel going to that product and you gave away half of them as promos. And like, they're doing all these things that people don't see. And they think it's just about launching a product on Amazon. 
but it's not like if, if other people are using other methods and tools, it's going to take you a little while longer to achieve that success. Just be patient with yourself, you know, like think about it like a business. When you first open the doors of a business, you're like tweaking things, right? You do like a soft launch. Okay. So most of my successful clients, we do a soft launch, right? And then we look at the data and I know that there's that whole, there's like a hype about how Amazon gives you extra bonus, goody, juiciness, whatever at the beginning of when you launch, it, it's not going to matter in a month. Okay. So right. do it the right way the first time. So do a soft launch, see if there's anything, you know, like look at customer feedback, see if there's anything you need to tweak about your product. If there's anything you need to tweak about your, you know, listing about your images, things like that. Um, you know, and if you've already done your research, there's usually not much, we have a 97% success rate of getting it right the first time. Okay. That's compared to 50%. Uh, for other regular sales copywriters, right? So we already know what we're doing, but that doesn't mean that there's not ways to continually improve that and look at that, right? So give yourself some grace, be patient when you're launching, stop believing the hype that you're going to make 80,000 million bajillion dollars, that every single product has to be a home run because it doesn't. Like all of these products add up to an amazing life, right? So focus on the positive you're getting from that product, right? Also like there's the whole conversion thing. There are some areas where we can go and get 37%, 42%, sort of even like 70% conversions, right? People beat themselves up and they're like, my product's only converting at 20%. That's really okay because the average listing on Amazon converts at like, this professionally written converts at 6%. And then this is the data that I received last year. And then the average one that's not professionally written converts at 0.5%. And those people are going under, right? Um, so like, uh, who is it that has, I can't remember, um, it might be, it's not, is it Celix? It might be Celix. I don't know. I love Celix. Um, someone has gone through and grabbed all the data for com average conversion rates in each category and they have it on their website. So you can go and look like, Hey, if I'm doing like, if, if it's average is 7.48%, I think for, I think it was like the household category is like 7.48%. So like if I'm getting 20% conversions or 18% conversions, I'm smoking most people who are doing this right now on Amazon. And yeah, I may not be getting as many sales as the people who are spending, you know, $500,000 a day to get those sales. I'm only spending 50 bucks a day, but I know that with a higher conversion rate, I'm going to stay afloat. And I know that I can continue to reinvest advertising. And very soon I'll be looking at spending that kind of money and getting those kind of sales. Right. So just patience is a, a really big one with yourself. Um, and then being realistic about what's possible. You know, we didn't hit six billion dollars by writing about three products. We hit six billion dollars by writing thousands and thousands and thousands of listings and analyzing tens of thousands more listings. Right. right. We didn't. It, it's not like we woke up one morning. And we're like, oh, hey, like I'm amazing at this. I'm just going to launch into the world. Like we became an overnight success in 10 years. I started studying persuasion when I was six. I'm 40 now, you know, so like it, it takes some time. Just be patient with yourself and be willing to say, like, if you're struggling and you're stuck and you're not good at this kind of thing, if you're really good at product sourcing and, you know, supply chain management, but something else stresses you out and you're not an expert at that, hire somebody who's awesome. At it. Yep. it doesn't have to be me. I There's agree. lots of awesome people. But, you know, like if you want to succeed, you have to bring the right people on board. You know, that's another thing. So I could, yeah. I mean, those are the, the biggest ones I see all the time. Um, you know, and then people just questioning, like, why, like, stop comparing yourself to other people, right? Like, if you're, if you're selling a new supplement, and you're trying to be, you know, um, genius, or you're trying to be a sports research institute, you know, like, realize they've been in this game for a long time, and like, give yourself the grace to say, hey, I've improved in these ways. Hey, I even launched this product. That's a huge, we know how hard it is to launch a product. That's a huge feat that you even launched a product, like pat yourself on the back for that, you know, like, give yourself some praise, and then go on to the next thing from there. So very so good. <laughs> no, it's perfect. <laughs> now I think we've got a bunch of questions. So Yay! why don't we dig into that? Okay. All right. So if you do have questions uh, while we're answering these questions, just uh, go ahead, put those in the I'd, I'd like to know if, if you had a listing that, uh, if you had a, a good, bad, or ugly listing, what made it succeed or what do you think made it flop? Right. Good, bad, or ugly? So, good, bad, or ugly. Are you ugly. talking to people in the audience? I'm like, I can't. Yeah, tell you. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our first question is from Dr. Cause. Are you a fan mm -hmm. of adding Spanish keywords in the back end? Uh, it depends on your product. I don't know if you guys know this, but while it's really great to use Spanish keywords, the fastest growing population is in the United States is actually Asian. 
So you might be looking at something like Mandarin, Cantonese, like Vietnamese, things like that. Um, as you well heard it here you. first. Yep. <laughs> we That shifted in, that, that's the new data as of January, 2022. So we, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Definitely advertise for them. Um, but something else to remember is that the majority of the world who speaks English also speaks other language languages and the majority of people who speak English don't speak other languages. So like most people who are going on Amazon to look at your products probably have a comprehensive understanding of English to the point where if you're writing at a seventh grade level or below, they're going to understand what it is. They may feel more included, um, you know, if you're using it in your listing. And we've done that sometimes with products that we know are going to be popular with particular demographics or ethnicities. Like we'll include words that are, you know, like that. But I mean, you can use them in your back end. I don't believe in trusting Amazon to, this is going to sound horrible because I'm the hypnotic Amazon copywriter. I don't believe in trusting Amazon to give me something, you know, due to back, based on back end keywords that they're not going to give to the other 17,999 people competing for those spots on page one. Right. So I'm not super concerned about using back end keywords most of the time, although we do provide them. We need to focus on what we can control. Right. We can't control what Amazon indexes us for. We can't control like based on back end keywords. We can't control what they rank us for based on anything but advertising. Right. So advertise, get conversions, focus on that. That's what's in your control. Back end keywords there. It's fun to add them. It's like putting a cherry on top of a cake. But, you know, there's not a huge market difference, right? Focus on the things that really move the needle, advertising. All right. Conversions. Perfect. Okay. okay, great. All right, next one. Uh, this is more common. I thought this was funny, but from Jessica Rabbit. Uh, based on years of personal experience, I'm convinced that an invisible magnetic field immediately is created between a child oblivious <laughs> to your presence. You must now see Yay, you when you're world. on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Oh my God, I've been outside the door like nine times. I swear, like, there's even like, there's junk food in the kitchen right now. And they're they're like, out. I can hear them. And the littlest one is super cute. He's one and he's running around and he's amazing. He's just so delicious and like, just he's squishable. I love him Aww. so much. So I don't mind, like I'm used to him, but then like you can hear other ones kind of walking past, like, what is she doing in there? She's got some kind of secret lair and she's taking over the world and I'm not getting to play along, you know? <laughs> yeah, Jessica, that is correct. There's a magnetic um, field. Awesome. Uh, so Jessica also has a question. Uh, what's your starting point in progression when you write a listing? Uh, the product or the t uh, targeted customer and how do they intersect and influence each other? How do you deal Those with the competition listing? Yeah. Okay, what's your starting point in progression when you write a listing? My starting point is, also, is always with mindset, right? So I will go and I'll look through their questionnaire, right? So the people who work with me always complete this questionnaire, okay? And I'll go and I'll look through that and that gives me lots of different like nudges and feelings, right? Always, I get excited about the product, all that fun stuff. I move on to doing the gratitude thing I was just talking about. Like, you know, thank you so much for, you know, thank you so much brain for guiding me or universe. I say universe, you know, most time. So thank you so much universe for like guiding me in, in like feeling and understanding and seeing the right things I need to write in this listing. You know, thank you so much for making this such a success. Thank you so much. So I go to that, right? And then I go back to the questionnaire and I'll take down um, I'll look through it, see if I need to ask additional questions. Okay. And then I will go and like take notes. And as I'm taking notes, these ideas start sparking for hypnotic anchors. Right. And I'll start saying, okay, well, before I even look at competitor stuff, I see what the, the, the product is about. Right. Um, and then I'll go through the competitors things and I go through the reviews and the questions to see if we've missed anything. Right. And then I'll go back and circle back and ask those questions because sometimes, uh, you know, like if it's a new product, I don't know what features it should have because I've never purchased one. Or, you know, and we work on new products every day or because I've never created one. I've never sold one on Amazon. Right. So we circle back with questions that way. Um, and then we go on to competitor data and it all starts kind of formulating like in my mind and other people, I, I tell them to like, I, I teach my students to use like, you know, X's, right. They have Excel spreadsheets and they're like, I saw this thing mentioned by people who purchased the product like this many times, right? I saw this problem mentioned by people who want to solve this problem this many times, right? So we have like, we use an analytical approach and data before we ever get to the creative side, okay? So we go through and we do that. And then I'm making sure I'm on topic with them, the product customer, how do they understand? Okay, um, that helps us determine, we don't determine our target customer until after we've done all of our competitive research, right? We don't determine our target customer or our positioning until after we've done all of that. We can't actually know how, 
how overpopulated the market is or how, you know, what do we say, like market confluence. We won't know that until we go through and we look at everything, right? So um, because one product can solve a lot of problems for a lot of different people. Okay. So then we go and we look at positioning. Most clients, like when, when they come to me, I'll say, okay, who's your target customer? They're say uh, people 18 to 65 who are making between 10,000 and $200,000 a year, high school or college educated, um, may or may not have kids, may or may not have dogs, may or may not, unless it's a dog listing, like a bad thing. So like people don't really know who their target market is when they come to us. Right. That's one of the things I love is like, People bring us like a blank, it's like it's like a blank slate. They bring us a product, right? And they don't really have like an idea of exactly how to use the words or who to sell it to yet, right? And we have some brands we've worked with for 10 years who now have a brand and we know how to stay within those brand guidelines, right? But we still then have to look at positioning. What are we talking about to make it superior, right? So then that's why you do that research. And then you kind of get a feel for who to sell to, right? If you if you understand the different customer awareness um, levels like one through five, we've talked about that. That's like a whole hour conversation in itself. Like you, you, you're able to start seeing like, okay, well, we're not the top brands. We, you know, this is, these are the people we need to target who already know this is the solution type they want. These are the people we need to target who haven't chosen a solution type. This is what we have to say about the product for that. So we kind of go into that and then let me make sure, you, um, let's see here. Um, and then, you know, like the, how to deal with the competitions listings. Like we make our products sound better than the competitions. Or if it's not, if there's something they have that we just don't, right? Um, we admit it. We say, you know, like this may not, and it actually builds trust immensely with people. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that. Like admitting that this is not as great in one area, right? Actually builds trust with your customers, with your consumers. So if you say like, you know, this baby blanket may not be, you know, the largest baby blanket, but it's, you know, like it's the softest and it's the, it's the longest lasting and they'll have it when to pass on to their grandbabies and share with their, you know, like to use in their baby photos when they have kids. Right. So we're talking about things like durability and softness versus like the other guy who is selling a bunch because his blanket is able to be used through the toddler years. Right. But this is something you can pack up and you can, you know, go and it's like nostalgia. Right. So you openly admit like, hey, you know, this isn't as big. And you can also kind of not trash it. That's not the right word. You can also kind of like make it into kind of a tongue in cheek negative. Right. Where it's like, you know, yeah, our, yeah, we only have, you know, like two rice steam, like we only have a two tier rice steamer instead of a three tier rice steamer, you know, but, you know, unlike those guys who, you know, you can't really fit in your cupboard, right. Um, you know, but it has this and this and this and this and this, right. Um, or it cooks more efficiently or, you know, so that's another way to deal with things competitors have that you just don't have. And it builds trust, you know, like it's companies need to realize that, you know, their products, what they are, and what they aren't, and that it's okay that they don't have every single thing that everybody else has, right? It's still going to target the right person who wants the little old lady or the family of four who wants a two-tier rice steamer as opposed to like the giant, like, oh my God, someone brought me one last year that was like six tiers. And I was, I'm sitting here looking at this and I'm looking at the space between total rabbit trail, but I'm looking at the space between my stove and my microwave and realizing that this would not even fit in my kitchen, you know, I can't even use this. Right. So, but people were thinking more is better. More is not always better. So if you see your competitors and they have more of something or it's bigger, that's okay. Point out that there's, that there are other ones that are larger, but that yours is superior in these other ways. That's how I deal with the competitors listings outside of, of course, reviewing everything about them. And right. we do our minimum is 10, right? We want to do a minimum of 10 reviews uh, like in-depth reviews, right? And then kind of look at the rest of them. Because the, the only ones that really matter are the ones that you're really competing with for that page one position. The guys on page four, unless they suddenly, you know, win the lottery and have a million dollar a day ad budget, we're not really competing against them right now. We're competing against the people that are at the top because we want to be at the top. Okay. Okay. Awesome. awesome. All right. Um, so I know we were mentioning uh, the buyer avatar um, so we had a question from Yanni. Uh, what tools uh, are you using to specify your buyer avatar? Um, I research? come from the old school method of college. Okay. So when I'm going to look at a buyer avatar, I'm not really looking at tools as much. I'm using my brain and I'm using all the knowledge I've gained from a lot of books and I'm going through and I'm outlining what I'm seeing in, you know, from the problem perspective, right? Because what you're providing is a solution. So like, what are all the problems that we're seeing in forums and in, 
Amazon listings and in, you know, like in the um, reviews and on in Facebook groups. I mean, I, I must be, I looked the other day, it was like, I have like 12,000 Facebook groups I'm a part of, you know, like I'm going through there and I'm, I'm being a troll. I'm being the Snoopy person on the wall, right? Like I just want to see what their problems are, what people are talking about. <clears throat> That's how we're kind of looking at our buyer avatar. But when we're writing and we're writing to one person, I don't ever think of them as being like a, somebody on a sheet of paper. I think of it as being like, if I am their best friend, who would their best friend be? And how would I help them solve this problem as therapeutically and, you know, joyfully as possible while sitting next to them, having a cup of coffee or, you know, enjoying a beer together at the bar, you know? So I don't really look a lot at like, my customer avatar drives a Lexus and they, you know, like they have three kids because nobody fits that. Like, first of all, whether or not they drive a Lexus doesn't really matter. We found out when it comes selling on Amazon and we can't really get that data unless you have, you know, like links to Axiom or something. Um, but like we realize that we're really selling to people to solve a problem. So how would you, how would you do that? Right. And who is the person you're selling to? So we, when we're writing to just one person, it doesn't mean that that one person is the same as every other person. We're writing to a human being. That's what we think of in terms of writing to one person. Not we had someone. a we had a good talk about this in our Patreon call uh, just the other day, and we were talking about Spark Toro, which is a very easy way to find out at least the influencers and what that demographic oh, yeah. looks like. You but, can go look at their influencers. <clears throat> sure. The other thing we were talking about is building a uh, a segmented list just driving people over to your website, asking a couple of questions and, and building it out over time. So you get a really in-depth view of, of uh, your this profile that you can build of your customers. So we were talking about pets. Do I have a small dog, a large dog, a medium-sized mm -hmm. dog? So th that's a great way of doing it. That takes a bit more time, but at the end of the day, if you have repeat customers, you get to really get to know them and then you can break them into very specific lists that would work quite well. The other thing, um, Stephen Black came on and he was talking about mm -hmm. um, eavesdrop, go into into groups, see how and the language that they're talking and start speaking their language. Is that what yeah. you do as well? Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, we're, we're more focused on being human um, and the human interaction, the human perspective. Right. So like we go in and we engage with people's customers in these groups. Right. So we're because a lot of people say, oh, well, you really need to call their customers. A lot of people don't have enough customers to call to get good data, right? Yeah. With the dog thing, like we automatically know if we're selling a product for a small dog, those are going to be people with small dogs, right? And we're talking to people with small dogs and they use a specific language and it's a lot of times it's very cutesy, right? And that's fine. So we can use that language. You know, you can learn that language like Steven said from groups. I love Steven, by the way. He's amazing. Yeah, he um, is. <laughs> he's really, he's like so well-rounded in so many things and he's so mindset oriented. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can, you can do that, but we don't really... When I'm thinking of it, I see, when I think of the person after going through all the research and reading, you know, um, through the forums and I'm reading through their problems and I'm, I'm like really trying to feel what they're feeling, I don't write down things like blonde hair, blue eyes, you know, five foot eight, tall, size three, drives a Lexus, like the psychographics and demographics, right? I literally see somebody sitting next to me that I'm talking to at a bar. Right. Like someone like you've met your friend for a midday drink because they're just having a heck of a time and you don't know what's wrong. And they tell you what the problem is. And then you say, oh, I found this amazing. Here's what I've been using. I had that same problem. I found this amazing product. Right. Um, so we're thinking about them. Like, I feel like a lot of marketing has the reason a lot of marketing fails or even not even fails. It's just mediocre is because we become so focused on the, you know, the demographics and psychographics of people. Right. When we used to sell to people before demographics and psychographics were even a thing, we were selling to people because we wanted to solve their problem. And so I come from a different background of, you know, sales copywriter as a therapist, as opposed to sales copywriter as like, um, you know, like as an analyst. And my like my degree is one of my degrees is in statistics. So I can completely go through and read the statistics and, you know, do all the market analysis and all of that. But I feel like when it comes to sales copy, we're speaking to a human being to help them solve their problem, right? And when we're looking at the market, you know, we're looking at whose problem can we solve the whose problem can we solve better than anybody else's, right? Even if the like we've we've taken products, we pivot products, Norm. I don't know if you know that, but their products were like we're we're failing in this category, right? 
um, or we're not doing, you know, like maybe a supplement. We, we're not gaining enough of the market share. It's not worth it to sell anymore. You know, help us figure this out. And we'll pivot it to solve a different set of problems. You don't even have to change the bottle. You know, you can just like, we took a product that was for uh, pre-diabetes and pivoted it for PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. You know, we've taken products that are out of compliance because of what they want to, the problem they want to solve and pivoted those so that they're selling a problem they can legally solve and talk about on Amazon. So um, we, I mean, it's just, it's kind of a very, I want to say organic process. That's not, that's not the right thing. It's kind of a very fluid process, right? And we know we're getting it right. We know what we do works because of our success rate, you know, and we keep, we still go to all the podcasts and the webinars and everything mm -hmm. else, you know, I still go and do the updated marketing training and, you know, um, you know, we know how to do all of that, but we feel like it's, it's thinking about every product as being a problem solver, like a best friend that has a heart that does that really gains us that that gains our clients market share, not necessarily knowing like having every marketing certification that's ever existed, if that makes sense. Right. Okay. So let's have two more questions and then we'll have to cut it off. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I know you can that's go fine, for fine. another hour or two. I, I can keep going, but everybody else has a life. So, you know, <laughs> All right. Uh, from Dr. Cause, what are a few underrated features in Seller Central not used by sellers that would help with sales? Are there any underrated features, features that you're aware of? That help with sales. Um, one of the things I really like is using meta tags under images for EVC. A lot of people don't realize you can do that. Uh, it's so the individuals who are um, sight impaired, I'm not sure what the technical term is now, but people who use specific software that reads what is in the listing to them, um, that's what it's actually there for. So they know what's in the image because they can't necessarily see it well or at all. But what that does is Google really likes those meta tags. And so a lot of times that'll help you get ranked higher up on Google for search terms, uh, not necessarily on Amazon. I don't know if they've started indexing those yet. So that's one that we like to use. Um, using your carousel correctly. So, you know, having your first seven images, you know, your first six images and then a video, right? I think a lot of people have missed out on that um, because I think it's 48, it's between 48 to 52% of sales come in from mobile. And that's the first thing. And the only thing people see a lot of times before they buy, we're finding a lot of people aren't even going through and spending enough time to read through, you know, if we're, if we're hypnotic enough with our images and with what we're putting on them, People don't necessarily need to read the rest. They're just like, oh yeah, this is what I want. Oh, the price registers my brain is being awesome. Oh, I already saw the other comparison. Like, this is what I want to do. I don't want to waste my time. I'm just going to buy it, right? So those are a couple of them. Um, in terms of like the advertising side of Seller Central, I don't run our PPC division. We have I have somebody else who runs it and they're amazing and they're experts at that. And every time they come and talk to me, I'm like, I'm so glad you know all of this. So they might be a good one for me. You know, like if you have questions about how to do that for me to ask them because I can't be the master of all things. And these guys are amazing. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, those are some underutilized features, you know, just words yeah. on images and, you know. One of the areas that I think copywriting would be fantastic with is the new uh, managed product, uh, managed product documents, which you allowed to update um, brochures, yep. troubleshooting, user guides, direction, I mean, everything, mm -hmm. uh, certification. But if you can apply really well-written copy there as well, you've got the upper hand. Like, we used to be able to, uh, it was kind of gray hat, but uh, send out PDFs. You used to be able to do it. Then it became mm -hmm. gray hat. Then it was no, but now they're allowing us to do that. And if you've got a listing, apples to apples, has no information, and then you've got a, a listing that has all this information. That's definitely something. Um, they also have, and this this brand story. What's that? Brand story. The new brand, brand story, story and version. and that's also yeah. on um like We've that's an option now on yeah. um uh, a plus. Like you can mm -hmm. you can choose to do brand story, which is great. But there's there's a couple of tools out there. Um, I forget the. I know what I will. You guys will know what it is under inventory. It's uh, listing optimization, I think it's called, or manage mm -hmm. listing optimization. That's great. Under growth, growth opportunities, it's going to tell you on your listing if you do this, click here, and you will get an extra thousand dollars in sales. I, it's it's really simple, and mm -hmm. even in your product health, if you go up there and check that, you'll see what they're going, what, what Amazon sees is a problem with your listing and it'll give you a suggestion. So there's a few 
really cool things that you can explore right now. Um, it, just check out inventory. So there's a bunch of new buttons there. Check mm -hmm. out your performance health. Check out uh, under the growth tab, growth opportunities, and you'll see a few more items uh, that you know could could help improve your list listing sales. Do you still want to do one more? Uh, yeah, we can do one more. Let's. Okay, I'll try to keep it short. Our... <laughs> okay, <laughs> and uh, just a reminder: with the questions that we haven't answered, you can go ahead and post them in the Facebook group too. Um, we've got a great group of people and experts over there. Um, I'm sure someone can help you out. And even um, just getting the community's opinion on these questions, I think, is always a good way to go about um, answering these questions. Um, all right, from Simon, what are the steps for going from problem, problem focused to solution oriented? Oh, that's a great one. Have you ever, um, there's this book called Flip the Switch, right? I recommend everybody read it. Uh, it's a great mindset book. So what I do is I go through a flip the switch product pro process. And so I just literally look at what the opposite is of the problem, right? So if it's like, okay, so I have a problem. I can't say I'm, I'm not pregnant, but let's say you're pregnant. You can't tie your shoes, right? So what are all the solutions to, to looking at that? Okay. So we know that, um, you know, like you can have somebody else to help you tie your shoes. You can get shoes that don't need to be tied. You can slip on. You can get some kind of object to help you tie your shoes, like some kind of, you know, like hook or something. Some people use those. Um, so think of all of the different solutions as opposed to just one solution. And then pick the one that, you know, seems like it makes the most sense to do first. And the way that I look at that is like, I look at, you know, the, the time, talent, and treasure, okay? Or my fingers in it, time, talent, treasure, right? So how much time is it going to take me personally to implement the solution? How much money is it going to cost me? Um, you know, and do I have the skills, capabilities, you know, necessary to actually execute this as a solution, right? So, and then look at the one that, you know, you can also look at impact, right? So like, if you know, if I would hope everybody, but at this point in time, if you don't understand analytics, and, you know, like what a click through rate is and, you know, what a conversion rate is and things like that. Like if you're looking for more sales, you know, you can go through and you can look at that. We should do a pot. We should do a podcast just on that. Like looking at like how to determine what, where your sales are failing on your listing. Right. That'd be really fun. Um, that's the next one. That's the next one. Remind me, we'll do that. Cause I have okay. a whole 11 step process to go through that. So, you know, like the, there's, there's so many different ways to, to flip that switch from, so from, you know, problem oriented to solution oriented, but just start listing solutions. And if you don't know, like five of, find a five-year-old and ask them, seriously, like five-year-olds know everything. They will tell you, they know everything. So, you know, like, and they'll start, they can get the juices flowing, right? Or I guess my kid's six now, but he's, I'm always like, ah, there's this problem. And he's like, well, we could do this or this or this or this or this. And most of it's outlandish and it's not going to work. But even if your brain will, like, if someone tells you a solution that doesn't work for you, your brain will automatically shut it down. And it's called, um, it, it's called an opposite oriented response, right? So then your brain will start thinking of a solution that will work because it's like, well, that won't work, but this will work, right? So even if you get people presenting you the wrong solutions, your brain will start triggering like, okay, well, I'm in problem mode, but I know that solution won't work. So, you know, here's a problem with that solution. So here's a solution that'll work for that next problem. That sounds, I feel like I need to write that out or like, like create a visual for that or something. But yeah, I mean, for me, it's just become a natural habit. Right. I think it's, it took a while to become a natural habit of like being solution oriented. So. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> I think we've covered it for the day. <laughs> this has been a good one. <clears throat> what a minute, uh, an, a minute, an hour and 15 minutes going right. into the wheel of Kelsey. Okay. I think we got a, a couple of people that entered today. Oh yeah. Just a, just a couple. Just I a think couple? we're, we're close to breaking a, a record. So. Um, <laughs> and I, again, right. I got to thank Diane for this because, you know, one would have been enough, one would have been enough and it would have been an incredible gift on its own. But thank you again, Diane, for this. Yeah, my pleasure. All right. I'm so here we go. The, wheel, the wheel of Kelsey. Oh, make sure that you enter Simon. Oh, yeah. I, I got the uh, 20 entries. It's time for the wheel of Okay. Okay. I'm just going to make sure. Last a few call. People today. Just a couple. Just a couple. 
just a couple. All right, we got an extra two from Simon. Perfect. Okay, so we'll shuffle these up. Uh, we've got two giveaways today. So if you are the winner, please email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com. And here we go. What a great giveaway. All right, who got that? Oh, Nathan. All right. Congrats, Nathan. All right. Remove. And here we go. Three, two, one. So that is k at lunchwithnorm.com. And the next winner is Nicholas S. All right. Fantastic. Names to start with N and last names to start with S. Exactly. There we go. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, just get your – just email k at lunchwithnorm. Uh, dot com and Kelsey will get you all Diane's information. And those don't oh, expire. Right. So if you don't have a product um, yet and you don't have a product that or that you're launching right now or you don't have one you want me to work on yet, you can always just circle back like we just did one that I think was one last year. We just wrapped it up this last week because they just oh, came wow. so yeah so it's not like you have to rush and do it. Like don't try yep. to think of something, wait until you really, really want to use it. And then all just right, kind fantastic. of fantastic. Diane, thank you. Now I, I think I, I think the next time you come on, you probably have eleven kids, but you know, oh you just kind of no, keep them in check. I think we're good. I, I really <laughs> think like at this point in time, you know, we've got the youngest is one, the oldest is fourteen. We're you know, like we're feeling pretty good about. Yeah, we have we, we had to buy. We bought a fifteen passenger hotel shuttle. Oh my gosh! We really did. <laughs> So don't bless me with 11 kids. We're, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Diane. Well, thank you so much for being on. I really yeah. appreciate you coming back. And the topic you were just talking about five minutes ago. Yeah, we're going to, I think that's a great topic. So we'll, awesome. uh, we'll yeah. reach out. Okay. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you guys. Have an amazing day. And you too. All right, everybody. So I hope you enjoyed today's show. I know you enjoyed today's show. Um, on Friday, uh, we're going to have Brian Johnson on. He hasn't been on for a bit. And we're going to be talking about uh, hook split testing and increasing your infer uh, conversion rate. So that's going to tie in really nicely with some of the things that Diane was talking about today. But uh, before we go any further, just another quick word from our sponsor. I wanted to give a quick shout out and say thank you to Global Wired Advisors for sponsoring this episode of Lunch with Norm. Global Wired Advisors is a leading digital investment bank focused on optimizing the business sales process. For more information, please call Chris Schifferling and his team over at globalwiredadvisors.com. All right. Now we're back. Kelsey. All right. Yeah. So thank, thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, we got fantastic response from everyone. Everyone loves Diane. Um, and we can't wait to have her back. Um, so that's great to see. Um, come back on Friday. We'll be going live 12 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, next week, I just want to give a little shout out to Tony S., uh, Tony Cigar. He is giving away pillows all next week uh, as a special thank you. So, oh, fantastic. Um, just, I didn't know about that. Thanks, Tony. Let your whistle a little bit. So, uh, yeah, we, we've got a great list. We've also got Stephen Pope coming up next week. So, um, yeah, it's going to be great. Um, also, we do have a brand new blog out on the Lunch with Norm website uh, from Gatita, where they collaborated with us. So check it out, Six Ways to Reduce Your Amazon FBA Fees. And uh, of course, our TikTok is up and going now. So check it out. That's just Lunch with Norm, and you'll be able to find it. And there, um, There's I no think... beard on the TikTok. It's just, it's Kelsey. Some yeah, of the from beard. my perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah, check it out. <laughs> And uh, of course, head over to our Lunch with Norm uh, Facebook group. That's Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA, and e-commerce collective. If you want to join our community, our Beard Nation, and uh, yeah, it's great to and hang out with, with everyone. The, and Kels with the nation too. What's happening is we really want to build engagement, and we we've got great. Like we got tons and tons of people that are responding. We're trying to do that even more so. So. Look, we, we got want an army. We want an yeah, we, we want a nation. So uh we're trying to hey, look, uh, we have a leaderboard every month. P 
people that contribute the most, uh, they go into a draw for a $50 gift card. And I guess we're closing up the months fairly soon. I don't know who's the winner is this month, but, uh, you know, check it out. We, we, we want that engagement on our uh, Facebook page. So, or group, I should say, Kelsey will correct me afterwards. Yes, that's right. But yeah, uh, that's about it for today. Um, All right. Yeah. So that's it. That's it. Okay. So join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. And as I was just mentioning, this community is awesome. We couldn't do it without you. Enjoy your Wednesday, and we'll see you on Friday. Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the.